What's up guys, welcome to Average Joe's Whiskey. Today we are going through 10 of the best available bourbons that you can find on the shelf right now. So the 10 best available bourbons, these are going to be bourbons that I consider widely available. I can go to the store and buy every single one of them right now and I live in Virginia, which is an ABC state, not the easiest state to find bottles. So if I can find them, I'm assuming other people can find them too. And before I start, I just wanna say these are not really in any particular order. I kind of put them roughly in order, but the ones at the bottom of the list are phenomenal too. So you can really kind of rearrange any of these, okay? So these are available, these are available, they taste good, and I think they're fa fairly priced. I think they're fairly priced. So yeah, let's, uh, let's jump into it. So number 10, we are going to kick this list off with a little wild turkey action. Russell's Reserve, single barrel. I also thought about the Russell's Reserve 10 year, 10 year for number 10. Both of these are great bottles. Either one of these would fit nicely at that 10 spot, but between the two, the single barrel is the one that I like better. I think these tend to be around the eight year mark. They are 110 proof, non-chill filtered. One of my favorite bottles from Wild Turkey. These are available for around 60, $65, uh, at least here in Virginia. And it is an excellent bottle. Should I taste these as I go through? Taste the whiskey. Taste the goodness of the whiskey. Let's have a sip of each one. Just a sip. But yeah, Russell's Reserve. I love all the Russell's products, I really do. For the price, for a widely available bottle, Russell's Reserve, great, great value. Great whiskey. These are just sweet, a little bit of cinnamon, very, complex, very interesting, excellent bottle to kick off the list. Number nine, Old Forester 1910. So Old Forester 1910 is part of their Whiskey Row series. This is double barreled. They age it in a new charred white oak barrel and then, and then after they're done aging it, they put it into a heavily charred barrel, like a really heavily charred barrel. Double barrel whiskey, 93 proof. Man, this thing is like a vanilla bomb. It is a vanilla bomb. Yeah, the thing I love about the 1910 is just the mouthfeel. For a 93 proof whiskey, the mouthfeel is like incredible. It's like you're drinking milk. It's like you're drinking whole milk whiskey. All right, we'll make a little infinity glass there. Let's keep going. Number eight, coming in at number eight, I've got the Four Roses single barrel. A Four Roses single barrel is one of the first bottles I ever really fell in love with. This is when I realized like, I was drinking a lot of whiskey like on the rocks. I was order like Maker's Mark on the rocks at bars. And then I think for my birthday, somebody gave me a bottle of Four Roses single barrel. And I was like, wow, I guess this single barrel thing is like what I need to buy. So then I just started buying nothing but single barrels for like two years. And even after all this time, this is still one of my favorites. So Four Roses has two mash bills and five yeast strains. So they've got like 10 different recipes total. This is their high rye recipe. It's like 30, 35% rye, I believe. I think it's 35% rye, but it's just a very cinnamony, very cinnamon forward whiskey. Yeah, it's still great. Cinnamon, cherry, brown sugar. Some of my favorite notes, this one has them all. I like a lot of the other Four Roses too. I almost considered uh, their Small Batch Select. I'll throw the Small Batch Select in there as an honorable mention. This one is 104 proof. Not quite as much cinnamon, but it is very sweet. And it's also a great bourbon. 
Number seven. For number seven, we are going to go with Knob Creek Single Barrel. Another single barrel. This is a nine-year-old whiskey, 120 proof for around $60, which is a ridiculous deal. I mean, considering all the, all the $100, $150 bourbons on the shelf, to get an almost cask strength bourbon, nine years old for 60 bucks, that's just insane. Yeah, you get that Jim Beam nuttiness. A lot of vanilla too. More vanilla than I remember. That higher proof really packs a flavor punch. Really nice finish on that Knob Creek. All right, let's keep this moving along. Where were we? 10, 9, 8, 7. All right, number six. Number six. Another one of my favorites. Maker's Mark 46 Cask Strength. This is the new release. So this is Maker's Mark Whiskey at cask strength finished with French Oak Staves. Not everybody loves stave finishes, but I think Maker's Mark does it really well. It doesn't come off like a finished whiskey to me. It just comes off a little bit darker than regular Maker's Mark. Regular Maker's Mark, I think is like a, just kind of like a sweet cherry. Maker's Mark is just kind of like great traditional bourbon flavors. It's just cherry, vanilla, sweetness. But in that 46, it's a little bit darker, a little bit of chocolate in there. The regular Maker's Mark is kind of like a cherry pie. The 46 is like a chocolate covered cherry, not a chocolate. Is there a chocolate covered cherry pie thing? I don't know. It should be. That sounds like it would be good. Yeah, the Maker's Mark 46 Cax the Maker's Mark 46 cask strength is around $65 in Virginia. So for a uh, cask strength whiskey, it's very reasonable price. Another honorable mention, another honorable mention, regular Maker's Mark cask strength. Maker's Mark cask strength is a great bottle, especially for the price. These are like $45, $50. One thing I love about Maker's Mark, their barrel entry proof is a lot lower than a lot of the other distilleries. When it comes to barrel strength whiskeys, a 109 proof cask strength, to me it's just that perfect balance of flavor and proof. Like it's not gonna set you on fire, but it is still really good. You're not sacrificing any flavor there. I don't know if that made sense, but. Number five, speaking of cask strength whiskeys, Jack Daniels. Single barrel, barrel proof. So after I got that Four Roses single barrel that I love so much, I saw the Jack Daniels single barrel. I don't think it was barrel proof at the time. I don't think barrel proof was out, but I was like, ooh, I know Jack Daniels and this one says single barrel, so this has got to be good. And I fell in love with it. That was like the next bottle that I absolutely loved was the Jack Daniels single barrel. And then the single barrel, barrel proof, which came out a few years later, maybe it was way, I don't know when it came out, but these are a great deal. These are about $70, $69.99 for the full size bottle, not for the little one. And if you're looking for a barrel proof whiskey that is totally available in that 130 proof range, this is, not only is it one of the easier ones to find, but it is phenomenal. Take a little sip here. I'm trying to go light on the pours. I'm not trying to drink 10 glasses of whiskey on a Tuesday. It's just that classic banana bread nose. A classic Jack Daniels banana bread nose, but just turned up to 11. And there's some like dark cherry and brown sugar in there too. Oh man, that is so good. So, so good. And it's really the only single barrel barrel proof that is super easy to find in that 130 proof range. Another honorable mention is the Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye. This came out allocated in a lot of places, but if you held off and didn't pay an obscene amount of money for it, you should be able to find it on the shelf just about everywhere now for the same price. These are about $69.99. This one is 133 proof. And this thing smells 
unbelievable and it tastes unbelievable but this is just one of the best rice you'll ever get your hands on and it is super easy to find incredibly delicious but this is a list of bourbons it's not a list of rice so i figured i would leave that one as an honorable mention but yeah both these jack daniels are great i highly recommend picking one up and if you don't like it you can use it to set your enemies on fire number four woodford reserve double oat this is the lowest proof whiskey i have on here this thing is unbelievable though so to make the woodford double oat they aged this just like woodford reserve in a charred white oak barrel and then they rebarrel it similar to the 1910 but instead of putting it in a ridiculously charred barrel uh its second barreling is in a toasted lightly charred barrel and it is amazing how good this is the nose on this woodford double oak is just like a cherry bomb so cherry so vanilla so easy to sip like this is super crushable this is probably the most crushable bourbon on the list i think it's one of those that's really good to get people into bourbon if you're not used to drinking it's lower proof 90.4 um super sweet super delicious great mouthfeel just a great all-around bourbon my wife and kids just came home and they're making a lot of noise all right guys top three so for number three i felt like i had to put one in here that carried a higher age statement since the highest age statement we had the knob creek nine the uh, Russell's Reserve 10 as an honorable mention, but nothing with a super high age statement. So for number three, I had to put, which might be the most delicious bottle on here, Calumet Farm 16. All right, in Virginia, this is easy to find. So this is a true 16 year old bourbon. It is 106 proof, 53% alcohol, and this thing is unbelievable. So these sell anywhere from about $130 to $190-ish. I think I've seen them that high, but it's a 16 year old bourbon, 16 years old. The general rule of thumb is if they charge about $10 per year, it's spent in the barrel. That's a fair price. So 16 years old, $160. If you can get it for under that, it's a great deal but it's not just 16 years old it's freaking delicious oh my god just the the sweetness and the oak are so well balanced on that calumet 16 it's unbelievable it's really just so good so a little bit expensive i know but i wanted to throw one in there that was on the higher price side higher age side and that one i think is pretty easy to find and it's great so there you go number three calumet 16 which brings us to number two number two so earlier we had one similar bottle but this is a different animal old forester 1920 so the 1910 is a double barreled whiskey at 93 proof. This was bottled as medicinal whiskey. Oh really, never even read the bottle before. So this Old Forester 1920 is 115 proof and this thing is awesome. Anything labeled as a medicinal whiskey is typically not good, but Old Forester 1920 is widely regarded as one of the best available bourbons out there. This is not a newsflash to anybody. It's got a reputation as being awesome. Oh man, this thing smells great. Yeah, the 1920 is just really dark and flavorful. Like I mentioned chocolate covered cherries earlier. This is like a super dark chocolate covered cherry burnt caramel bomb. Like just really dark complex flavors and enough proof that it is, it's got a great mouthfeel. It's really just the bourbon you wanna sit and sip. It's just great. 
I wish I had more to say, but it's just really good. And the number one available bourbon on my list. What else could it be, guys? Wild Turkey Rare Breed. This thing is like $50. It's $52.99 in Virginia now, but you can regularly get it on sale for like 50 bucks. 116 proof is a mix, I believe, of like eight, 10, 12 year old bourbons. And this thing, this thing is great. Did I forget to mention the price on the Old Forester? This is, this is around $60. $60 in Virginia. $60 pretty much everywhere, I think. But for $50, you could get a wild turkey rare breed. A lot of people might have the rare breed rated lower than the Old Forester 1920. I think the Old Forester 1920 is something you kind of have to be in the mood to sip on. Honestly, I could drink wild turkey rare breed at any time of the day. It's like sweet, citrusy, brown sugar. It's like a, it's like a fruit cocktail with oranges and cherries and brown sugar. Just very interesting, very good. It's just a great, great bottle. Like I said, you could rearrange a lot of these bottles and I wouldn't be mad at you, but if I'm ever, if I just need a great whiskey in a pinch and I don't have to think about it, I don't know what kind of situation that would be, but if somebody asked me what my favorite whiskey is, I kind of just instinctively say, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. That's, that's why I have it number one on my list. Man, it smells great. It really does smell great. I'll add that to the infinity glass. Oh man. Well, that's all I got guys. Thank you very much for watching. This is a really long video. This is going to be a nightmare to edit, but whatever. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was informative and helpful. This is just my opinion. I would go try all of these and figure out what your own opinion is. Uh, but honestly, these are 10 bottles that if, you, if you're getting into bourbon, and you're trying to hunt down all the Buffalo Trace products and the hard to find allocated bottles, I would make sure that you have all of these first because all of these are great. I'm not saying they're better than any allocated bottles or anything. I think a lot of them are, but if these were allocated, people would absolutely be hunting these. So really just buy these. And then if you wanna go hunt stuff, go hunt stuff. That's cool, man. That's totally cool. But these are all worth buying. These are all great. If you're getting into bourbon, these are bottles that you need to have. And yeah, that's all I got. Thank you guys. All right, let's try this infinity glass real quick. Oh man. You know what, this whole thing smells like uh, Old Forester 1910. That 1910 just completely took over the nose. Just super vanilla. All right, let's try it. That's what I live with every day. She's a lovely woman. I swear, she's lovely. God help me. All right, thank you for watching guys. This is not that bad actually. I'm probably gonna drink the rest of this at some point tonight. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Good night.